Well, I am so delighted to have Marguerite Rugolio so back on our podcast, we'll call it. And um, Marguerite, I'm so honored that you would uh, come back and do this amazing next installment with us um, regarding your upcoming program. Um, you've got this name down here. There's a few names. Reclaiming Guinevere, Arthur, the Fay, and the Round Table is one of yeah. the names you've got, right? Yeah. And um, I mean, you are a divine birth expert. So I'm like, how did you get from Mother Mary? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, do these worlds intersect? What's going on? So I know, Michelle, it's just <laughs> so weird. Like the way things have been going, all of these puzzle pieces are coming together for me now and for nice. everyone. Mm -hmm. It's it's like, oh, now I get why I spent 10 years looking at that and why I spent parallel time looking at this and the other thing. And they are all intersecting. And, you know, there are various seers who are helping us to do that. And I've been getting this information myself. So I'm helping us you know, bring together all these convergences. And so, you know, to start with the divine birth piece, this is definitely something we're going to look at in detail in the course. But suffice it to say that this has to do with the underexplored phenomenon of Arthur's conception, Guinevere's role and non-role in working with Arthur, okay, Merlin's conception, Ooh. and you know, a, a, at least one other conception in this story that suggest, um, let's say, you know, divine conception, tantric union mm. in a ritualized format, mm. in order to bring forth the true avatars. Okay, so. Okay. What I, what I have come to understand is that Arthur and Guinevere are like octave iterations of Jesus and, and Magdalene, who in this context is like a, an amalgam of Mother Mary, Sophia, and Magdalene. Like they all come together in, in this great being. Wow. That was supposed to have been divinely mated with Arthur. But because of what went down, mm. stuff happened. Okay. And they were, you know, Arthur is the last, as I see it, semi legitimately divinely born royalty king on the planet. Oh. Uh, already with, with his story, which I'm going to have people look at, mm -hmm. the veils were getting thick. They were coming down. There were problems already. Mm -hmm. The magician Merlin was getting a little too involved. <laughs> and um, yeah, the whole thing could not, they could not keep holding on to it. And it, it did not, it did not achieve what it me was meant to. So um, now Fast forward to this time where we're in the incension, the ascension, the incension, and there's an awakening happening, you know, a quickening. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to find out that there's been this legend of Arthur that he was the once and future king, that he was essentially put asleep, um, what Lisa Renee calls stasis, and that he was literally they describe places in the uk where this happened i don't know if it's a cave in it's a cave somewhere wales or whatever obviously on the interdimensional level uh -huh. and lisa renee says that as of this year or last year 2021 2022 arthur is awakening from stasis period okay so that means that this whole thing is getting activated. And now this is explaining why I had all these pieces on the table. And I'm like, someday I'll, I'll talk about Arthur and Guinevere and you know what they represent. And I, I mean, it's truly astounding what's going on now. And 
she helps us find the, the lineages and the, the histories, the hidden and inverted and twisted histories that have been going on. Um, and also there are other scholars, you know, seers and so forth who understand that these beings are related to the dragons mm -hmm. and the fae, the fairies. Mm -hmm. Another whole story, which <laughs> connects all these dots of what I've been looking at. So the time is now, we are here. It's all, it's all awakening. We're all awakening from stasis if King Arthur does. Oh, wow. If, if, okay. And so um, you just, I mean, you finished the book of Mary, like yeah. it's been a year or so. Yeah. It's been out for a bit more than a year. Bit more, okay. And I have a second book on Mary that I'm working on now Right. that will have more of who Mary was, is, and shall be as she relates to all of us. Oh, good. And some aspect of her in connection to the Fae. She, oh, really? Oh yeah. my God, that's amazing. Um, so I'm curious, this course, how did it come in like recently? Like, I mean, you've had pieces all along because I know you were working with the Fae, you know, four or five years ago. And I, I don't know your whole yeah, projector, but I'm just so curious how this actually got activated to come out now. I know. I mean, I just was, it, it's basically, you know, Lisa Renee, like listening to her energetic synthesis on her site, energetic synthesis uh -huh. has something called shifting timelines and her, um, she has a, an audio and written blog that she puts out once a month Okay. for the past year and various topics I've listened to. And I just went, oh my God, boom. She's really talking about the awakening of all this. And she helped me to put together all these pieces. And then I realized I have pieces that she doesn't have. And that, you know, Wendy Berg, who talks about Guinevere as a fairy, mm. um, a fairy human hybrid, essentially, that, that Wendy Berg doesn't have. So I feel like all these things need to be put together. I see. And, and so over the past few months as I've been working on this finishing the second Mary book and the chapter was starting to get really long and I'm like <laughs> I can't go into this whole thing about you know this is a book about Mary I can't fully go into Arthur and Guinevere and I'm like okay I need to be teaching a course like this is I always do what I'm excited about I'm like this is what I'm excited about so over the last few months I decided yeah this is the next thing and um i i can't wait because it's mid-june it starts june 15th live and then you know as people watch this later afterward it's going to be four thursdays it will be on demand you know okay. remaining indefinitely so people can can still continue to enroll and go back to it and we're going to be not only talking about this esoteric history but also having experiences of um mm restoring the sacred marriage within ourselves because this is also about restoring the sacred marriage of arthur and guinevere mm. rushing off all of this negative stuff that ended up happening with guinevere and her 75 million abductions <laughs> and you know these other stories that went on about her right and really restoring the king queen energy mm -hmm. figuring out what the heck the round table is Mm. and using it figuring out what the castle is and using it and figuring out what the grail is and using it so this is going to be like the beginning taster of of all of these things that really are for the now and for the awakening consciousness and this big event that's happening on the planet which is the co-creation of the new earth the restoration of the linkages between third dimension and fifth dimension, the things that were torn asunder right around the time of when all this Guinevere Arthur business went down and, <clears throat> you know, coming together and co-creating the new earth. Wow. It's so rich. It's unbelievable. I, I love how it feels very experiential what you're what yeah. you are wanting to share uh, like the magical experiential connection to the fae and 
yeah this, in this information on top of it all i mean arthur and guinevere i mean this whole guinevere thing is so exciting and to hear that she's being reclaimed of her positive like i mean I i've not really seen a lot of positive guinevere stuff i mean there's some yeah but it sounds like you're gonna like blow the top off of all that yeah yeah absolutely because as we blow the tops off we shift our own realities within as we change the stories we change our realities like the magdalene story was a big one that had to be changed right and guinevere is an, is an octave iteration like i'm saying of magdalene whether she came before or after is sort of immaterial but the rewriting of that story and the cleaning up of it the clearing up of it is really important for us in terms of how we're going to go forward as women mm -hmm. and how we're going to go forward as as women and men being together um or anyone who it, you know wants to be in the sacred marriage template so it's very very exciting and that was interesting too that i heard you say at one in one place that it that they came before Jesus and Mary, but then you're not really attached to the timeline. It's not so yeah. much the exactitude of these details. It's more yeah. much bigger. It's beyond. It's the magic and and it's the, magic. It's the magic that goes forward and backward in time. So who cares? You know what I mean? It's like time is is simultaneous. So let's just get with that moment and that story. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Lisa Renee basically says that. The, the Celts um, were, you know, they seem to be like a mixture of the Tuat de Danan who came in from the interdimensional realms and sort of ended up residing and being the fifth dimensional she and Fae, the shining ones. So they came into the British Isles and then the British Isles was also a place where the Essenes Mm. kind of came came up in but pre-jesus you know pre pre-magdalene and left their languages up there so there's a real strong connection between the she or the fey the high elves of tolkien the shining ones our ancestors our um kin in the other dimension and the essenes and what what that holy living is all about on the planet so all these things come together because when you bring in the essenes then you're bringing in the cathars right and you're bringing in all of this healing that needs to happen with these lineages that got genocided and these trauma memories that we have right you know and how they really even are connected with atlantis and lemuria really because we're all trying we're all figuring out that holy crap, you know, Atlantis is now on some level, right? Like all that we're, it's bleeding through, like we're not, they're like, it's not exactly just a past thing that Plato talked about, you know, pre-Egyptian. It's like, there's a level in which it's, phew, what's happening now? And, and those of us who are seeing are understanding this on some level, even though we can't cognitively put it all together. But I really do like what, what Lisa Renee does because she will give timelines. And I'm like, you know, reading going, oh, you know, because then, then when I do get like a linear timeline, I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'm able to kind of go in with my own Oracle capacity. And that's what I want everyone to be able to do who's gonna take the course. To tap into their oracular capabilities in general no. or specifically to this the, specifically to this and how it relates to their lives mm. and what's going on now because every single person who's going to be coming into this course is connected to this subject matter you're not going to even go there if you're not right but if you are chances are you've been holding this long term both love and grief at the same time inexplicable um about what does this mean what's going on here when did this happen and what does it mean for me today and that's where we're going we're going to like kind of step into it step through the portal and and look at what we need to do hmm. and so this reclaiming of guinevere i mean 
I mean, I read somewhere that there were three Guinevere's that are yeah. married to. Is that yeah? Yeah, it's really a strange thing. Uh -huh. In the in the ancient legends, like mm -hmm. the oldest legends that we have, which seem to be some kind of history, mm -hmm. you know, unless you're a constipated academic and you're like you make the whole thing dissolve, right? Because right. that's their job is to make magic and mystery dissolve. Oh, okay. Wow. They are hired by these negative forces in order to do it. And um, so, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll lose the whole train and thread if you try to look at these historical writings about the whole thing. You, you've absolutely got to return to the mystical because mm -hmm. these, these histories are originally all about Arthur dealing with negative interdimensional beings that are winged and serpentine and, you know, evil sort or people and bizarre cat-headed and dog-headed beings and you know I mean the whole thing is like a totally it's when the magic was alive and well both the positive and the negative right but yes in this ancient in these ancient stories it's said that he was married to like three different Guinevere's so like how 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 are right. how how is that possible to be? <laughs> First of all, okay, so this is where we start, have to start looking at it from the oracular lens, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and I haven't even looked at it yet. Like maybe I can do it with you today, but um, so there's, there's that. And then there seems to be this weird story that Guinevere had an identical twin sister also named pretty much Guinevere. <laughs> okay. Had a different spelling maybe? either a different spelling or, you know, there was like the greater and the lesser Guinevere and she was the greater, but the lesser did all these shenanigans with Arthur Oh, on the wedding night. Okay. We're talking shenanigans to mess up. Okay. The conception. So I'm going to be talking about all these details okay. and whatnot and so on. Right. So we can understand what the hell was actually going on and what the hell was the technology that could have been used to bring a double Guinevere into reality. Oh, and wow. is this triple Guinevere polyamory on the part of Arthur? Or <laughs> was it... Um, was it reference to a triple goddess energy that he was dealing with? Right. On um, what level does it operate? How literal, how magical? Um, you know, what medicine does each one bring or does this story need to be cleaned up, right? So these are the types of things that we're gonna be looking at, you know, from the third eye. And what I really wanna do is like get everybody into a total, you know, altered state experience for us to go into it together. I mean, I had actually thought about having like a cacao ceremony together and I might do like a separate one for those who are super into it. Right. Um, a little bit later in the summer, like what are we all picking up on here with this? Because right. I don't claim to have all of the threads and all of the histories, but I know that collect because these are collective reconstructions, really. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Which is, I like that, you know, it, it, you talk about the collaboration with the fairies and, you know, yes. that energy. That's right. That's right. You know, because the fairies and all that they represent, the she strain of them being the shining ones, like basically these interdimensional godlike beings who are our ancestors who mm -hmm. are us before we split into 3d and they stayed in 5d mm -hmm. and before these wars that went on mm -hmm. where they were forced to kind of go underground mm -hmm. or become more hidden mm -hmm. and the veils between the worlds became thicker and the um, Milesian wars and you know all this stuff so it's you know, there's a seriousness to that part of it, but then the fae, the fairies are also the realms of light and lightness and fun and play and, you know, magic and mischief, mm -hmm. right? So we, we need to restore all of this 
So that's part of what's happening here. It's like a huge thing when you think about <laughs> what this course is, but yes. you know, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to open the door here and then I'll see, because this is how I learn too, you know, and then we'll, we'll figure out what are the next steps. Right. That's very exciting. It's very yeah. alive and being created in process with, in, with, um, you know, yeah, I just, I really appreciate that you are in that open state of yeah. creativity and collaboration with, yeah, with your guides or the fairy, the phase and the people in the course. And That's right. it's incredible. incredible. Yeah, because, because really everyone has a piece and that's the that's the important piece of it yeah i mean this feels so different in a way than the mary story because that was codified i guess and i mean it's so much more known i guess and people believe it to be true on some level and this you're working with what people think they don't really think of Arthur and Guinevere as being real people, they think of them as mythological people. Right. So right. it feels like, yeah, there's more magic actually in expansion through this portal that you're bringing forward. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Arthur basically as, as an iteration of the Christ. And so together he and Guinevere are um, uh, form the Christ Sophia. And that's what we're awakening within our, our hearts and our seeing at this point. It's really all about the hearted ascension. So um, to return to what you said about Mary, you know, to some degree that she feels more real to people, or at least like you can get a footing with her. There's, uh, there's, there's, there's scriptures. Right. <laughs> sort of have to do with her or suppressed yeah. gospels and things. This this feels a little more, quite a bit more obscure. Um, but, you know, all the more room for us to open our own third eye, our own third ear, our own third, you know, second heart, whatever it is, our own wombs and, and to tune in, you know, who are these people? Who were they then? Who are they now? How does it relate to us? Where are they going? Where are we going? Because gone are the days of, um, you know, this second coming. Is there right? a wind over where you are or something? Yeah, there, there oh, is. Oh, there is, okay. Yeah, I know, I was hearing it on your end too. Let me oh, see. really? Kind of, yeah, it was sounded like drag racing or something, but you know, the fairies, I mean. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, you haven't pixelated yet. <laughs> okay. You know, that has happened to me when I talk about the fairy. I know. Fairy. I've been watching you go that into is, like amazing that. pixelation. Yeah, it's just so weird. Um, but, you know, like this is gone or the, okay, so this second coming of Arthur, right? Mm -hmm. The second coming of Jesus, the second coming of Mary, the second coming of Guinevere is not about big king queen figures who are going to solve all our problems right it's about them being present with us on the inner planes and us being able to open to them as guides as guardians as healers as mentors as teachers so that we can have the the, the ascension within ourselves mm. that's what's different now mm. about you know any other time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so I think that's why it's important to see these, hold these people in a kind of a light, even paradoxical way and, mm, right. and be with them on different domains. Like, yes, they could have walked the planet or maybe not. However, they still exist. And if so, what are they telling me now about myself? Mm -hmm. What medicine do they hold? Mm -hmm. That's where I'm, that's where I'm coming to with this. And yes, there are places on the planet where these beings are anchored. Jesus, you know, it's in the Middle East and so forth. Arthur, it's in the British Isles. Mm -hmm. um, but 
it's also on the inner planes. Mm -hmm. And that's what Lisa Renee is really good about talking about. Mm -hmm. Like where, what dimensional layer is this happening on? How do we, how do we get that map? Right. So she's she's offering a kind of an interdimensional map, which I love because when she says the 11th dimensional stargate, you know, or something like that, you're like, oh, wow. You know, that kind of gets you going and gets you starting to open in amazing ways that are actually part of your initiation Mm -hmm. to understand what that is, to remember, to go there, to restore. Mm -hmm bring yourself into your, into your own divine human blueprint. That's what, you know, our original blueprint. So we're all coming out of stasis. Right. And it, it just feels also that in a way, even though they're mythological, Arthur and Guinevere, they almost seem more relatable than Jesus and Mary, because exactly. do you know what I mean? They're, they're like more human or I, I, I don't know. So- Something. Yeah, they were in with all these intrigues and everything. Yeah. Not only, not only, I mean, so were Jesus and Mother Mary, but they yeah. were, we understand them more in their advanced levels. Yeah. And now, it, you know, that almost seem a little un, unattainable. Yeah. And now by checking in with the Arthur and Guinevere levels of that soul being, let's say it's all part of one soul tribe. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, okay it shows us what we need to clean up within our own soul Mm -hmm. like with arthur what gives with this constant warfare i mean the guy was killing this person and that person you know and guinevere with what was up with this sexual intrigue story that's connected with her right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm what's the real Guinevere? What's the real Arthur? And therefore, what's the real us? So yes, they give us that slightly more human being energy. Mm -hmm. And they also give us much more of the obvious unlocking of the door again to the Fae realm. Right. Because, um, you know, Wendy Berg is talking about Guinevere as being fairy lineage. I'm definitely going to be talking about that, how and why that is. Mm -hmm. And really, Lisa Renee is talking about Arthur as being fey lineage as well. And um, also connected to these dragons. And what the heck are these dragons? What is this? Mm -hmm. And what's a good dragon versus a negative dragon, right? I mean, This is where the great confusion took place. And I've talked about this for years that the dragons were misrepresented as our lizard friends, let's just say. And that this is a problem because these beings used high level technology or whatever to confuse everybody about what was a dragon, which is a positive energy being that has to do with um, creation source and what was a negative unfriendly force that kind of looks like a dragon but isn't and is you know hijacking that image Mm -hmm. and then this led to the killing of the dragons and so forth but we're going to be looking at at arthur's parentage you know connected to the dragons and what is it that we need to harness about these dragons? What is it that we need to understand? I mean, you know, Kaya Ra has been o- opening this door mm. about the Sophia dragon tribe. And, and Lisa Renee has been opening this door, especially of late. I mean, she just said a stunning thing in April, 2022, where she was basically said, Mary is the mother of dragons. And this is what's returning on the planet right now. <laughs> you know, okay that that like blew me wide open with all the mary stuff right how i don't quite understand when you say dragons are creational energy how is yeah. that they are 
they, you know, when you start studying dragons and what all these seers are saying and teaching about dragons, you start understanding, wow, they are cosmic creator beings, deeply connected with the feminine and with what we would call Sophia as the great cosmic mother womb of all creation. They, they are these um, form, they, they are these energies that come into form that we understand as dragons. These dragons are in all traditions, mm. right? right? The Chinese think about the Chinese and think right. about you know, the ancient Celts and they're all over the place. And they are intimately connected with the earth realms because there are earth dragons. Mm, I see. That have to do with ley lines and earth energies. And um, they have been diverted and hijacked and imprisoned and torn apart. Tiamat is a dragon. Right, right. Tiamat. Mm -hmm. Okay. She's a dragon whose womb was cut apart by that Marduk guy, you know? Right. That is not a positive thing. No. All right. So we have to understand and look at where are the dragons in these stories and how do we need to resurrect them because they're coming out of stasis. And they're connected to snakes. They are connected to snakes. And Which so gotten a bad rap too. They've gotten a bad rap, Eve. Because of this cosmic confusion, connecting them with, you know, the lizard beings, as I'm calling them, but people right. are using other words. I don't want to use that word right now, okay. but it begins with an R. <laughs> and, um, you know, again, this great cosmic confusion, that's the piece that I've been bringing in that I, I haven't even actually heard anyone else speak to. So it's like, we're all having to bring in these pieces and understand the travesty of the reversals that have happened, mm -hmm. the wool that's been pulled over our eyes and what we need to do to reclaim this power because to reclaim dragon energy is to reclaim sexual energy. It's to reclaim creation energy. Mm -hmm. It's to reclaim you know, cosmic mother energy and it's to reclaim phallic energy in a big way. Wow. This is only the beginning. Like, you, you know, Honestly, I, I'm just planting seeds here, but yeah, people, you know, some people listening to this will already know this and be farther down the road. Great, you know, come be in our course, be, give information, whatever. <laughs> um, and and you know, others will be like, wow, what right. is this all about? What do I need to do with this information? I mean, I started learning about, you know, taking some dragon workshops and things like that. And there's there's this woman who has um, a dragon oracle card and, you know, there's water dragons, earth dragons, mm. fire dragons, air mm. dragons, etheric dragons, mm. right? All of, there's many different types. I've seen the dragons come through trees. They can be birthed through women consciously back into the earth plane through our wombs. And, and what, what do you mean exactly? Not through, not as a child, is it? Or What you do is you birth a golden egg into the earth. You squat. And then you've birthed a dragon into the earth. And you ask it to awaken and do its positive bidding. Wow. That's, this is stuff that was, that's been coming to me in medicine ceremonies for, for decades, you know, for two decades now all these pieces. Yeah, because the womb seems to be consistently throughout it all. It is. It's totally throughout it all. Mm -hmm. And of course, the reversal of it, what happened to Guinevere, how she was maligned. The female sorceresses in the story, Morgaus or Morgaine or more, um, you know, um, Morgan Le Fay, whatever her name is there. Um, Right, and, and these intrigues that went on among the women and this fighting, this womb fighting that ended up happening. And so, but yes, the womb again is the, is the source of it all. So do you see Morgaine as a, not a positive? Well, again, her story got probably hijacked. Yeah, 
because yeah. there are a lot of people who love Morgaine. Like I think yeah. you know, Miss of Avalon, she's sort of a protagonist. Right. You know, it's we we have to look at and clean up all this stuff. I mean, there's always the negative aspect of the feminine. There's always the positive aspect of the feminine. Right. But we're also starting to look at as Lisa Renee is doing is like, well, who did that inverting? Yeah. Who created that story of that person? Um, what do we need to do to clean that up mm. and restore? Um, Morgan Le Fay is something besides whatever she is in, in these various stories is oftentimes an evil sorceress, so to speak. Right. And Guinevere has had her thing with Lancelot and this. Oh my God, the whole Guinevere thing, you know, I mean, I'll be, we'll be talking about that in the course as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lancelot and Lancelot and Guinevere did they or didn't they <laughs> I want to know <laughs> inquiring minds want to know inquiring minds do want to know yeah because when when Lisa Renee point blank said that is a made-up story yeah and then when I went and looked that it came out in um uh Chrétien, um you know of France and and later you know, it wasn't exactly part of the original. Lancelot is not even mentioned. Wow. You start yes. wondering. Hmm. Mm. And it's interesting that in my, just because you've inspired me to work with Guinevere in my wound power class this week, this I was is... looking for images of Guinevere and they're always with Lancelot. There's very few with Arthur, I very know. few. That's right. And, you know, that's why we... The one, the, the image that you have there, we found it's a public domain yes. image that my designer, Mariah Lander, worked with yep. um, to show a positive relationality yeah. between Arthur and Guinevere. Yeah, I know. I found uh, a wooden sculpture of her and Arthur. Yeah. But it's, um, that's very few images. And I was like, that's part of the, the propaganda. Let's it just is. focus on her as uh, this woman with having an affair with this. Yeah, that's right. If she wasn't already having an affair with Mordred, um, Gwen, uh, King Arthur's son. Oh, right. That's an earlier one. Right. You know, which is an abduction story. So we, we don't even know how much control she even had in that situation and mm -hmm. what she forced into it. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, I think that, you know, once I gave myself permission to consider by what Lisa Renee had said, that opens up a whole door. Well, what if actually Guinevere had been happy with Arthur? How would that restore the sacred marriage on the planet? Right. He was, after all, a powerful king you know, until he became sort of watered down later by the French, um, <laughs> the French writers. And, uh, and so what would that be? You know, and I, I'm going to have people like, think about that, dwell with that, work with that, because here's what, all of this business of Guinevere and all these abductions and these sexual intrigues and betrayals, could it be that this is just part of the sexual misery programming that was inserted by these beings right. into our realities and timelines, then to be continuing to be propagated and serving as bizarre role models for us where we can't even stay loyal to a partner and, you know, right? right? It yeah. affects us. It's like, wow, can somebody really be happy with somebody for decades? Right. Totally. Right. Yep. Um, so these are the possibilities that we're looking at. That's like, awesome. what could that look like without loss of sexual vitality, loss of attraction and, and attractiveness, loss of freedom, right? What, what are the benefits of that mm -hmm. coupling like swans or doves? Right. 
That's beautiful because yeah, because you know how many people, especially women, are so upset by all of this negative sexual programming that's going on, starting with porn, yep, and going into all of these stories and these alien love bite energies of getting seduced and then getting dumped and oh my god, you know, we just need that off the planet right now. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I love what you say about the Fae. Now, okay, so before we talk about the Fae, I mean, we're going to talk about them, but how, why is it important that Arthur and Guinevere of, are of the Fae lineage? <clears throat> because what's happening right now is we're moving back into fifth dimensional consciousness after a long time of being in 3D, in the Kali Yuga, the nadir point of earth plane living right a living hell essentially mm -hmm. where we've been cut off by from magic as a whole mm -hmm. people are eating cornflakes and looking at football and you know working in uh whatever jobs they're working in and this constitutes the life and the death of a person on the planet we need more okay right and so those of us who are using this time of great travail, upset, and weirdness that we're understanding, this is the time of the great awakening, mm -hmm. saying, wow, okay, so then what's being required? What do we need to do? Mm -hmm. We need to get back into magic. In order to understand magic, we need to be understand how we are this close to the beings on the other side of the veil okay and the first ones are the fae they are okay. like closest to us because they are in fifth dimensional reality in the same third dimensional space just a phase shift away they are our teachers and our trainers if we can get in with them mm -hmm. then we can start opening to this bigger and broader picture I love it that you've just started to pixelate, by the way, <laughs> in a very oh, soft oh, way. In, in a, a very, very weird, yeah, I, I'm. <laughs> I was hoping you no, would. <laughs> I know, it's just so weird. I'm like, what is happening? Is this my <laughs> camera? Um, I know, it's subtle, isn't it? It's kind of yeah, beautiful. It it's, it's like, yeah, but it's it's like, here they are. Yeah. They, they play in and out of technology. I mean, we've all had that experience of negative and positive. Yeah. Um, so well i love sorry yeah i know good you can see it good okay all right so they're playing right they're now. really playing I, I mean honest to god have not had this you know i, I asked i love it yeah, because there please show yourself right okay so here they are showing themselves here yes showing themselves i am not doing any tricks <laughs> Why am I suddenly looking like <laughs> this I'm is going into the other world? It's so totally trippy. It is. It's so different. I've never seen this form either, right? It's a yeah. new they're 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 offering a new like way of seeing the, they're being seen. Yeah. Um, well, I love I guess I'm gonna have to talk to you from behind the veil now, Michelle. <laughs> it looks like it's here to stay. <laughs> You're with the oh, there you are. <laughs> It's so oh, weird. when you go closer, it's better. They love, to, they love to like play with blur now. They're like, I Ooh, love it. Blur. This is a new way we can like <laughs> work with it. <laughs> it's really the beautiful. Same light that I always do. Right. I have outdoor light. I have I have my you know little O ring light. And okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna work with it. Good. Well, um, I'm glad that they popped in because you know they're 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 adding to, they're affirming that they are really close to us. And that, and I, I think what I love about you, I mean, I never heard that before, that they're the closest to us of, of interdimensional beings. And that just makes them that much more accessible and the way, you know, that they are in nature and, and all of that. Um, Cause they are us, they are our kin. They're our kin. Yeah. And we need to remember that. 
so that we can activate those aspects of our DNA. Okay. That's what it is all about. Okay. And so that we can be in three dimensions while being in the other dimension. Michelle, I swear, <laughs> this is like really weird and trippy. They're just, okay, I just have to surrender to them right now. This is just so, we were joking earlier, all right, about the pixelation. And totally. This is, wow. This is the blurification version. Yeah, that's right. Wow. But when you lean forward, it seems to, I love that. That is gorgeous. I There's see like um, a rainbow thing. Is yeah. Rainbow? It's like, yeah. So here's the thing about the rainbow. Uh-huh. That is related to the round table technology. Oh, really? Yes. So that's what we're going to be looking at together because the, the round table is an interdimensional technology for unity consciousness and equality. Oh, beautiful. All right. Yeah. You know, it's not just a big like desk of oak that's round. <laughs> It's, um, it's an inner technology. And Lisa Renee talks about the relation of the rainbow to it. <clears throat> so we're going to be looking at that and how it's, um, it's a portal technology. That's so interesting because it does relate, you know, this over the rainbow kind of thing, you know, know. People who are fascinated with real rainbows and wearing rainbow yeah. colors and, you know. I know because, <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Oh my God, this is so weird. I've, I've sat here for months and years. And um, so the rainbow, here's the thing about the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Anyone can look at the rainbow and understand interdimensional reality. Mm. It's right there in front of your eyes. Mm. You do not need to be a magician, a scholar, a sacred medicine cosmonaut. You just look, need to look up in the sky and go, that is really trippy. Mm. And what is that actually? And that's why in the last class, we're going to be working with the rainbow and the um, round table, but also with the leprechaun power. Okay. Because this is why the leprechauns are connected with the rainbow I was going to mention, I always think of leprechauns and rainbows together. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're really the ones that govern the rainbow ah. in terms of helping hum their teachers of humanity around the rainbow and notice that the pot of gold is connected to it. That's right. And so they are all about the new economy on the new earth. I love it. Okay. So we're going to be working with the leprechauns, um, the last class, the leprechauns, seeing fairies, uh, and and working with them at a new level of manifestation magic, because they're like amping it up now. They are. Yeah, yeah. In 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 everything I've been doing in client sessions and a number of years ago, they're like, well, create a leprechaun altar. You know, we'll show you how to do abundance and on a, a new level and this whole thing about gold right which is okay. totally the thing right now yeah it's it's etheric gold it's physical gold physical gold is really powerful because it has a very strong etheric component hmm. and what i have received is that it's an antidote a um, protection mechanism against AI. Whoa. Which is more than AI as being more than, you know, a little algorithm that if you were thinking about bras and then all of a sudden you see bras ads on Facebook, it's more than that. Right. Okay. AI is like a whole other level of shenanigans. And so we need our gold, our gold light and our physical gold um, to combat this, which is why these beings were having, were mining gold on the earth. 
Oh. Because they knew they needed to have gold in order to withstand the very AI that they were starting to put in motion. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Because so that they didn't get totally swallowed by it. So they need to have these gold shields and whatnot and so on so that they can use it and direct it and not be at the effect of it. Meanwhile, they can, you know, disturb everybody else with the effect of it. I mean, all these things, the unfriendly forces, the lizard people, the Anunnaki, et cetera. All right. So I'm, talk, I'm, ta I'm talking to you, you know, at a pretty deep level here that it's like people are ready. They're ready to hear this. There are a lot of people are going to be activated and go, whoa, okay. I just got another segment of my marching orders. Right. You know, they're going to take it and do their thing of what they're meant to do. And we're all awakeners for one another. That's so beautiful. I mean, it's so 5D, you know, to think. It's totally 5D. Yeah. To think in that communal collaborative way that we're all have pieces to this puzzle and we're all, yeah, yeah unique. Yeah. Contributors. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And you know, these are the Merlin teachings. The mystery schools were always an inside job. Mm. So the Arthurian experiences that are sometimes described in these ancient uh, legends and so forth of these trippy experiences that Lancelot had and all this, um, these were inner experiences and inner teachings and the, the knowledge was only obtained through the experience. And Merlin was one of the great teachers of this. He was a real magician priest um, for it. And he was in a lineage of these priests and priestesses. You know, of course, the females get the bum rap, <laughs> the more gains of the world and everything. Right. Whereas the Merlins are like, oh, you know, they can do whatever manipulation they want and everyone's okay with it. Right. Meanwhile, Merlin was already, already creating problems, which we'll talk about it. I love you, Merlin. However, you know, because right. they started getting desperate too. Mm. They started getting really worried about humanity and like, oh my God, it's going to be, it's going to slip out of our grasp mm. in a way it has, or it seems like it has, but not really. Because we're all coming out of stasis, as I said, we're all awakening and we're all figuring out what this means in the now time, which is the no time, mm -hmm. which is the all time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Merlin, I had his uh, sense of him in my medicine sessions years ago. Uh -huh. And I'm like, ooh, Merlin, wow, you're so cool. I love you. And his, um, interestingly, his teachings for me were all about time, the nature of time the weirdness of time, the malleability of time, the changeability and mutability of time. So isn't it interesting how today you and I are talking about timelines and the blurring of these timelines. And that's a totally Merlin thing. Mm. And he's like, yeah, let it work for you. Right. I'm always almost even just wanting to like close my eyes and see if Merlin or any of these people, sure. you know, and if you have questions, do you, okay. So let's just yeah. see. Yeah. You know, Merlin is like the archetype of the mage and the sage, mm -hmm. like the Moses with the rod, with the snake mm -hmm. um, and Tiresias, Tiresias, the great sage of the Egyptian of the Greek pantheon who learned the sexual mysteries by becoming a man and then becoming a, a woman and <laughs> um, and learning what it was like to have sex as either of those right um, so Merlin Merlin was operating in a time when the feminine was really getting clawed out. And he had to take on male and female mysteries, but did it imperfectly. That's what I'm receiving right now. What 
how he got involved with these various conception rites, did not have all of the codes. And that was the issue. And that's why it didn't go well, because he was trying his best. But so much damage had been done to the sacred feminine womb codes by that point that he couldn't really control it. So he was trying to, it, it was like Guinevere herself needed his help for this. She didn't have it also. This um, right. Divine. Okay. And not only that, but as I'm going to talk about in the class, there was inter direct interference with that. Right. So even if she could have done it on her own, there was, yeah, yeah. yeah. The way you talk about it in your books. Yeah, it was exactly. It was a latter day or, you know, a version of the hijacking. Right. Of the divine birthing by the negative forces. Mm-hmm which included pretty high level tech. Oh. Yeah, even at that time, because we have to understand that anything on the other side of the veil where we're talking about these fantastical beings and da da da, this is all high level tech. Right. And in order to understand what that is, go dip into Lisa Renee's Shifting Timelines blogs under her resources tab mm -hmm. and her Ascension glossary and start looking up whatever you need to look up curiously for words and different things. Um, uh -huh. So, okay. So, you know, these, these magical understandings have tried to poke through various stories, novels, mm -hmm. movies, the whole Lord of the Rings cycle and, and all of that, which again, Lord of the Rings, it's all the unification of the fairy realm, the king and queenship realm, and the interdimensional realm of dastardly forces and so forth. Mm. And so it's up to all of us to uplevel our integrity and grasp what is positive and helpful and leave behind the rest and not get into these negative warring pictures and these competitions and these um, betrayals and, and all of this type of thing. As we clean this up, it will be less and less needed for us even to go there. There'll be less and less temptation for all of that, but mm -hmm. we're in a process of pulling the spiral up. Right. Is there a question, um, Michelle? You know, I'm, I'm curious about, it really feels like the mind control is the thing we're working with the strongest in this scenario. Like, I, of course, I want to talk about sex stuff, but <laughs> it feels like, I don't know if you want to address mind, sex, all of that. Yeah, just, yeah the mind control, you know? Well, the biggest mind control is um, the semi-successful move to veil all of this under the guise of fiction and non-reality. Yeah. If you want to get rid of the mysteries and knowledge, you just say it's not real. Right. And get people to believe it. And yeah. then they will dismiss it from their reality. Right. That's why the fairies and the whole thing about um, Tinkerbell and all that was, I believe, I believe, I believe. It's important to believe. Yeah. If you don't believe, you cannot operate in these realms. And so that's what uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm receiving from, Arth uh, from Merlin right now. And so What's happening now is a, is a kind of a dangerous operation that these forces are doing because they know that they're taking a risk by bringing us to the edge of cracking open through these ridiculous things they've been doing on the planet for the past two years. Right. Um, waking people up suddenly while trying to control them down. 
but there are so many people who are popping up through it like flowers, you know, mm -hmm. that it, it, it's creating more pop-up of people. Mm -hmm. And so we have to just keep that pop-up going. And those of us who were never clamped down to begin with are here to keep talking in ways that are pointed and getting, you know, the information across. Mm -hmm. And then also ultimately have to do with love because we're not going into battle. The battle is a love battle. Mm. That's how you're going to get around it, so mm. to speak. Mm -hmm. And you see what ended up happening is these, these beings, they were getting so besieged, they had to go into such high level internal warfare that it, it things started getting off kilter. And... Um, so we're all kind of getting pulled back to the level of awareness and the level of the heart. And that's also, you know, what this course is ultimately going to be about so that we're not wildly getting into warrior mode in, in an unproductive way. That's just calling in certain forces to us. Ah. Okay. Hmm. Beautiful. What else? Um, so what about the womb? How does the womb play in all of this? And yeah, you know, these guys were doing their best to protect it, clear it and so forth, but they just couldn't, they just couldn't, it was too much. Um, the influx of these negative forces, just, they lost their grip. And when you say they, you mean the, the positive beings that were trying to protect the knights and so forth, they okay. love the, the magicians, the positive magicians, the Arthurs of the world, mm -hmm. they were trying to protect and they lost their grip. Mm. And it looked like all was lost, but it's basically just a cycle that we had to go through. And in sort of trust and faith that, well, everyone was going to learn the lessons that they needed to down to the one individual, you know, all the individuals. And these beings understanding that they needed to take a step back or go into stasis, if you will, while we all were starting to work on it in our own way. So they had to trust that we would find our way back. Mm -hmm. And so now, um, with all of the work to restore the sacred feminine, clear the sacred feminine of misery programming and hijacking and controlling and the womb, we are climbing back up and out of this pit. And the women are being able to take back the power that the men were, because of these machinations of the unbalance between masculine and feminine which were caused by these exterior forces not by humans themselves right they the men did their best yeah they couldn't hold it they didn't fully understand you know the mysteries and things like that they got involved in all sorts of things as well and so now it's like enough of the baton was able to be passed Mm -hmm. to the women there was like a point where i'm getting that it could have all been lost but there was enough of the baton that was being passed through the time warp or whatever it is mm -hmm. for someone to grab it it's like mm -hmm. a different type of excalibur mm. so lady of the lake pulling in that phallic excalibur sword was part of this Mm. that it had to kind of go down in there and gestate for a while. <clears throat> the lake being the womb. Mm. Um, and now the women are reclaiming the power, which is why we can awaken to Guinevere into her full glory. Um, and, and clean up that story. Mm-hmm. 
and re-empower her because as we re-empower her, we, we re-empower ourselves as women, as priestesses, as fairy emissaries. So reclaiming sacred sexuality, reclaiming our connection to the womb and our own sexual energy, all of these things feel like they contribute to this 5D. Completely. Right? Because they were yes. they were co-opted away from us through mind yes. control and bad propaganda that it's bad and this and that and the other. That's right. And it became infiltrated and twisted with weird stuff. Um, right. You know, depravity um, that would let certain energies come in and feast on it. And so we're all like restoring and just releasing all this negative imaging and negative energy and negative picturing mm. that's in all of these um our wombs our phalluses and so forth right and and we are restoring wholesome lemurian sexuality right i mean this is it's like men had to have had to suffer through um circumcision like that's, oh my god right like mostly One of mostly in this country i hear it's worse in the states than anywhere else in the world but um yeah 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 i mean a total torture mechanism like rian eisler said years ago in the chalice and the blade to connect violence rage and sexuality mm -hmm. for men right and so these are some of the things that we're we're healing and reversing yeah no male circumcision no female circumcision the restoration of of a beautiful birth process not the medicalization of it right um, the the medical system being in service to the natural not the other way around yeah um yeah i've just been learning how i mean the birthing process has been so co-opted by the medical profession that it's to the point where women don't realize that they're the ones that know more than anyone else how to do this. And they exactly. don't need all this medical intervention that's interrupting their ability to go into ecstatic states. Yeah, you exactly. Can't. Exactly. Um, completely. And, and, and letting it be a lotus birth where the placenta, the umbilical cord falls off naturally instead right. of traumatizing the yeah. individual by cutting off a vital blood supply of an organ that is still giving it nutrients and energy of the mother outside the womb for that week period, right. that week long period. So, I mean, just crazy, crazy satanic, sick, twisted stuff that came in and that now, you know, you sound like a lunatic, right? Just to be proposing these other things, which is all part of that plan. Right. Yes. And, you know, it's it's at every level. Now it's at, you know, the other level of the medicalization of everything else that's been going on. And you sound like a lunatic if you're like, no, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, exactly. Um, so why is Guinevere so awesome? Yeah, let's look at Guinevere. OK, let's look at Guinevere, because I'm. I'm preparing for this class now. So I'm starting to really like work with these beings. Mm -hmm. What I'm receiving from her is that um, she would like to give everybody an invitation to see her in her shining one aspect mm -hmm. her shining one as an aspect of, you know, as a shining one. Mm -hmm. And we are going to do this in this course. It, you don't need the course to do it, but it might help you get in that mind space and that energy frequency. Uh -huh. But I'm seeing her as, yeah, the restored feminine. Holy gosh. I mean, she is, well, her name means like shining white, you know, light. Okay. And it's, it's, you know, it's been said to be white shadow and all this and that, but it's like, she's a shining one. So by seeing her in her awesomeness as a shining one in restoring her as a, as a shining one in the 
cause you know the the collective consciousness we help her heal because she was pulled down into that vortex of craziness right um we help her heal we restore her to her place and then we restore us to our place mm -hmm. and then she's a mentor as a shining one just like we're doing with mary magdalene mother mary any of these beings, I mean, these inner processes of restoring these beings mm -hmm. and, and to their rightful place is, is an important service that humans can give to them. I mean, I almost want to cry right now. Wow. To get them out of that vortex and that net of, um, Lisa Renee talks about it as like, uh, these like abduction grids or something like they get abducted into these grids and then they're there stuck Ugh. it's horrifying yeah right so you know i'm just inviting everybody just now to just tune into guinevere as her shining one status with her royal crown okay and her her shining garment and her fairy queenhood what does that do for you all right that's where we're going and one other question about that is there anything that sort of differentiates her as her it's like we don't really know where her strength comes from i mean i we you're saying a shining one so that must mean yes an elevated high frequency is there anything yeah. her her strength comes from divine mothers sophia goddess okay. and that's what we're going to talk about in the course as well it, it stunned me the names that lisa renee uses to describe her triple goddess nature i was like oh i know what each one of those things means oh my god talk about weaving things together and puzzle pieces coming together okay She's an emanation of that great triple goddess. And so are we all. Okay. And she retains her personality as Guinevere, just like you, Michelle, retain your personality as Michelle mm -hmm. in this lifetime, but you're part of a larger over soul mm -hmm. that is the goddess herself. That's beautiful. That's the mystery that we're all coming into awakening about. And these things do matter. These beings do matter. Humans are learning. There's still so much for us to learn and heal. In a way, it seems simple with how we're talking about it. Like, yeah, why don't we all just, yeah, okay, do that. But, oh my gosh, there's so much, <laughs> there's so much uh, negative forces right. against it. And again, people are still eating their devil dogs and their, <laughs> whatever they're doing. I mean, these crazy anesthetizing themselves with tons of alcohol and, thinking, oh, that'll get me into an altered state. Right. Well, how about using cacao instead? Or, right? Right. Um, any suggestions for the non-caffeinated uh, people, people who can't handle caffeine? <laughs> There's no caffeine in cacao. Oh. No, that's, again, a misnomer that was put in. There's caffeine in the stem and the leaves, but not in the seeds, which is what you ingest in ceremony. There's no caffeine. It's, but when, it's, when you get raw cacao, that's, there's no caffeine in raw cacao. I get buzzed, like I get- You'll get buzzed. Vibrate. It's not, it's, it's dealing with your vascular system, not your nervous system. Caffeine is nervous system stimulation. Hmm. Um, cacao is heart and vascular system stimulation oh, and it opens your heart. It opens your consciousness. It opens your blood vessels. Okay. That's totally different. It's not jacking you up like caffeine, even though you will feel stimulated. And then some people feel tired. They'll, you know, go to sleep, whatever it is that you need. So okay. this is a great, a great opener at this time for people to have understandings in a safe way. Right. And I mean, I 
feel like also that, you know, when you talk about the Fae and your other material, like connecting with nature and opening up to the possibility of communication. Um, right. I mean, All like of these, yeah, these things are plant spirits. They are the Fae par excellence, the mushrooms of the world, um, you know, the San Pedro cactus of the world, the the cacao of the world, even the cannabis of the world before it was starting to get hijacked and, you know, all sorts of things are going on now. So, um, mm. yeah, they, th these are, these, these are the very fae that can enter your bloodstream and give right. you an awakening. You will be one with them. Mm. And I so, think, so go ahead. Some people experience it with high grade spirulina. Right. Some people experience it with, um, you know, different types of things. Yeah. Matcha and, um, right. Then, you know, chaga sometimes or right. So there are many different allies for many different people tune in, see what is it for you. And then when you're in that place, tune into the fae. What are these plant spirits telling you? Open your consciousness, see what information jewels are coming into you. And I have to say also, I heard you say that someone asked, how do you heal heartbreak? And they said song and dance. And I have to say, I was on a hike with a friend and we were talking about issues where we feel mind controlled and how to work with it. Like just thoughts that keep, you know, chipping away. Oh, yeah. And we started singing songs about it just and it totally shifted the energy yes yes because levity humor you know all the arts they're they're all fairy given things mm -hmm. and yes the muses are are part of that um yes you can shift it because those thought forms are part of the programming all that anxiety programming the thoughts that are in the middle of the night or whenever it is yeah. It's also coming from the Wi-Fi signaling that's going through our bodies. All of that data that's going to your computer and this and that is going through your body as code. And then we're all wondering, like, why am I so anxious all the time? Yeah. Right. There's lots of factors that are going into that. Right. Wow. So good. Wow. Do you have anything else you want to say about oh, anxious? You know, um, it feels like we've come to completion, but let me let me just yeah. sense if there's anything else. What's happening is just, I'm seeing um, Guinevere in her shining garments. And I just sense her saying, let me show you myself as you've never seen me before in your, in your memory. I love it. Mm -hmm. So with that image. Yes, that's a nice <laughs> yeah, image. We, yeah, we invite people to either continue on your own or join us for the class. Yeah, I'll have a link below for people to to sign up. Yeah, that would be so great. It's definitely striking a nerve. Yes. Oh, I mean, it's, 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 I mean, I was just tickled beyond belief the minute I read your email. I was just like, and I had to listen to everything you possibly were saying about it. It was just, this is there's something so special about this yeah yeah it's it's connecting dots yeah it's joining puzzle pieces together it's restoring the net and it's helping us move forward in a really significant way i think absolutely and it's very exciting and it's fun. it's very ex Wait, what sorry very exciting cool and fun it is and and just the way you are able to connect it from to the big picture to the you know from the esoteric to the big picture of what's occurring right now i mean it's very 
integrate of how you've how you present all of this and it's accessible like it's it's workable it's doable it's like there's something to do here yeah there's something to do there's tools to be given and practiced and played with and um i, I just think this is going to just inspire people on their own to just go and exponentially work with the material and that's 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 the new fifth dimensional way of learning love that yes and all of your resources on your website are so amazing thank you for that generosity ah uh, you're welcome yeah you are modeling that generosity and inspiring you know here are some tools play yeah exactly yeah thank you and thanks for taking a look and thanks for having me here yeah so people people can go to uh, you're going to have the link but if I'm they're going to have the link they just go to seven sisters mystery school.com the seven mm -hmm. is written out and they'll see it either on the home page or under the online courses tab you mm -hmm. know the the course link will appear and there's again you know a couple of other videos and so forth where i start talking about this material and you have you it sounds like you're doing some blogs i've you, you yes you had a great blog just this sunday i think and you're going to be doing a few more you more i'm i've just been so inspired by these topics well they're vast actually they i got a little vast. i got a little overwhelmed in preparation because i was like <laughs> there is so much more to listen and to like digest here i'm like oh, no. God, i had no idea how big and vast this was in a good way but in a yeah. like whoa <laughs> yeah and this week coming up the blog is going to be about um the link to the kennedys no way oh my god that's amazing Marguerite, you are so freaking cutting edge i love it yeah it's love there's it. stuff to be said there so i was so excited about that blog post omg yeah yeah it comes out when um, that comes out every Sunday. Sunday it is. Okay, good. So, but people can look under the blog if they're looking at another time here and just see. Right. Uh, yeah, you'll see. You'll see the title of it. <laughs> thank you so much. No, thank you. Awesome. All right. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Goodbye, sisters. Goodbye, everybody.